محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سورة المباركة الفاتحة إلى الأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات خصوصا especially for those people who have taken the time and the effort and the money to provide iftar for uh, all of us here today. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبو الزهراء المصطفى عبد القاسم محمد والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه المبين وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد I begin in the name of Allah the All Beneficent All Merciful all prayers in essence is due to him and him alone. I then send salutations and praise to the Holy Prophet and his holy household. And first and foremost, I would like to thank all of you for inviting me here. As a state of Oklahoma, Jami and all the Husseinias included in that and all of you good people, inshallah. I promise I won't take too long. I know it's very difficult to concentrate during the day of Ramadan. But when you've eaten, subhanAllah, you feel more tired than anything else. So, especially when you haven't had the dahwa. So, I know it's late. I'm very grateful for you still being here. But I will just want to take a few moments of your time First and foremost, as the famous saying goes, "Man lam yashkur al-makhluk, lam yashkur al-khaliq," and I have to give thanks to each and every one of you, and specifically, first and foremost, um, to our dear brother uh, Aga Muhammad uh, for his great efforts. And he's mentioned you good people in very good light, and he's instrumental. I'm telling you right now for the reason that I am amongst you. So let's have one loud salawat for Aga Muhammad. <laughs> And secondly, it gives me a lot of pleasure to see, mashallah, that we have not just one but two Husseinias in within this vicinity of, of this great state of Oklahoma. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to continue um, to support and progress because we may gain everything that this world has to offer. But if we don't do anything for what is Baqiyat al-Salihat, which that, that which remains after this long life is finished, then we've done nothing. All we've got is dunya. And we always ask for khair dunya wal akhirah. So it's upon us, inshallah, to do a little bit for the akhirah as well. Now that that is finished, inshallah, I am very, very happy. I'm very, very honored. I want to give you mabrook, mubarak, for the fact that we have had just 
the uh, Mawlud of Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam. Please recite one salam. I am not here as a teacher. I am a simple student, talib al ilm. I am just one of your brothers. There are, mashallah, much elder people than me, much wiser than me. And I am here, in essence, not to talk to them because they know more than me. So who am I to talk to them? I am here to talk to my brothers and just to talk, not to tell you anything, not to command you to do anything, just to have a conversation, inshallah. So just take me as your simple brother who's here today from England, who's come to share Shah Ramadan with yourselves in your company, inshallah. And I just want to try to reflect on a few things. You know, Alhamdulillah, uh, this month is known as Shahrullah, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who said this? The Holy Prophet. So if we have a month that is attributed, that is associated with, that is linked with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for us in this month? You see, we have, uh, for example, our state or our country or our governors or our rulers, they give us certain holidays. And these holidays basically are what? They are for Liberation Day. Uh, they are there for, for example, um, commemorating independence and so forth. And during this day, what happens? Our governments, they give us some type of discount. For example, if you are from Kuwait, subhanAllah, when you have Independence Day, the Emir, he comes out and he sometimes he forgives the mortgages of certain people. He gives out gold, he gives out all sorts of things. Here, unfortunately, they don't have that amount of wealth themselves. So what they do is they give you um, discounts. So for example, you will have uh, the January Christmas sales and you will find things that are cheaper uh, for you because of the holidays. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He in this particular month has ordained certain things for us as well. The one thing that we have to remember and understand is this. The holidays were originally made up of two things, holy and day. For example, Sunday was the day in which the Christians regard as the day of rest. So they regard that Allah, as far as they're concerned, He built the whole universe in six days and on the seventh day, He had to take rest. Alhamdulillah, we do not believe in a God who needs to take rest. But because of that, they made Sunday a day where you didn't do any work. Alhamdulillah, the situation is now like this, that even the day that is attributed to God is a normal working day. And you have a Sunday shift to do as well if you're not working for the rest of the week. But the problem was this. There was nothing holy about this particular day. In fact, any single holiday that we have, there's nothing really holy. Even Christmas here is not really holy. It's about commercialism. It's about selling, buying, and that's it, celebrating. So generally speaking, when we have holidays from our governments, from our rulers, from our statesmen, from our countries, they give us a day off. In that day, what do we do? First and foremost, we don't, we have a good lying, right? We don't wake up on time. We relax. Then what do we do? We, mashallah, we make sure we eat well and we drink well. And then what do we do? We just relax and just laze and take everything easy, right? We overindulge. Subhanallah, that holy, not day, but holy month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, He expects us to do the complete opposite. When He gives us a month, there's no oversleeping. Subhanallah, we have to stay, we're recommended to stay up in, in the night instead of Qiyam. So we do extra worship. And there's no chance of overeating or over drinking because He's told us that we can't eat and drink during the day. In fact, in this day or in this month, even those, those things which are halal for the rest of the 11 months, even they become haram. For example, eating and drinking, there's no issue. 
having certain conjugal relations, there's no issue in the 11 months. But in this month, subhanAllah, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's even taken those away from us. So we start to think, I know, I don't understand, why is it so difficult that when we follow your path, that what is what the norm of our society is, is that when we come to you as belief in you, it's the opposite. Even the first month of our calendar, everybody else, from the Chinese New Year to whichever New Year you go to, they start their year with celebrations. But when you come to Islam, we start our year with mourning and crying. SubhanAllah, every single thing which is to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like you're swimming against the tide of this society. But alhamdulillah, that we do swim against the tide of this society. And now, unfortunately, this society has also taken over the so-called countries which are supposed to be Muslim. Because their culture has become very much this culture and this society. So, why? Well, the basic thing is this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives His creation, those who He loves, those who He cares for, those that truly believe in Him, He doesn't want to give them just a bargain for something to buy cheaper, or clear their mortgage, or give them wealth, which is going to be for a temporary period of time while you're alive in this world. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month, which is referred to as, as His month, He wants to give you those things which will last forever. You see, brothers and sisters, we may think that this world is everything, but when we just reflect slightly, we start to understand one thing. We are not here this is not our aim, this is not our destiny. We were meant for something else. For example, people may say, yes, I'm a body, but I, and I have a spirit. The reality is that you are a spirit with a body. You may say, what's the difference? It's a huge difference. You see, the spirit that resides within each and every one of us existed eons ago. Billions and billions and billions of years ago, your existence was there in the form of the Ruh. And it will continue for eternity. You have a very small time where you exist in the form of this Insan, this Bashar, this human being. The point is that this life right now, this small period, is absolutely crucial about how your eternity is going to be either in a state of bliss or in a state of damnation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants one thing from you very simply He wants you to exchange this small period of imperfect life for eternity of perfection now we may have, been, we may have come to this country looking for certain things for example we may want a good car, and a good job, and a good house, inshallah, a good partner, good clothes, plenty of money, good food. But honestly, is there anything in this earth that compares to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the mu'min in the hereafter? Nothing. No matter, no matter how beautiful your partner is, she's nothing in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you there. No matter how great your house is and how well furnished it is, it's nothing in comparison to what He's prepared for you over there. Furthermore, anything that you can eat or drink is incomparable to what you have prepared, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you there. So, what is the point? The point is this. We are fasting this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, you need to fast. Okay. What is the reason? And I'm asking you, each one of you, if you haven't had this question already, 
by yourself or other people that you work with or you're at school with ask you this why are you fasting? what is the point? what is the raya? hadaf? for this month? truly some of us will say well I am a believer in God and one of the requirements from God is that I have to fast okay that's not really an answer Somebody may say, well, I fast because I find that my family fasts, so I fast. Or my community fasts, so I fast. Again, that's not really an answer. Then some of us, mashallah, who are a little bit brighter, they come up with these type of answers. They say, I fast because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants me to have a one month to detox physically become fit okay so that I may become healthier and then we also say the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained fasting is because there are poor people in this world and he wants me to also feel what they are feeling that's normally the reason we give for why we fast or why we've been fasting but let's take both of these into consideration there may be some benefits of both of these arguments but is that truly the aim and the ambition of why we are fasting? If the fasting is for the person who is supposed to be, become healthier then somebody who is physically fit already who has a BMI which is on the dot who is super fit, watches what he eats the 11 months of the year then he would be exempt in this month, right? But he's not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, even if you are physically fit, you have a lean body mass to fat index, you still have to fast. Which shows that the point of this month isn't to become physically fit. Number two, if it was for the poor people and to feel and empathize and sympathize with what they're going through, Again, those people who have not enough food to eat for the day, they would also be exempt, right? Is Sayyam, the fasting, only for the rich and those who have enough food to eat? No. Even if you're poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you, commands you to fast. So we realize that that isn't the aim. So what is the aim? You know they say if somebody does something without a purpose or without a name, that per person is doing something aimlessly. Right? And we all know Al Amalu Biniyat. So what is the intention truly for why we are fasting? And not by what you or I think, but by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. Right? Please recite one salawat if you're not tired already. So, inshallah, we've come to the point where we're asking ourselves truly. If we've never asked ourselves before, let's ask the question now. Why am I fasting? Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained this? And it's very simple. I started today's majlis, khutbah, with the very verse. And the verse states what? It's in Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, I'm sure you've read this many a time. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is talking specifically to you. Not to those people outside, to you people. And he's saying what? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu Those of you who believe Kutiba alaykum as sayyam Prescribed, endorsed upon you Is sayyam, is the fasting Kama kutiba alalladheena min qablikum Just like the way in which The fasting was prescribed for those nations before you And the reason La'allakum tattakum So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the real aim and the ambition behind why we are fasting. And it says, so that we may become God conscious. You see, sometimes 
Fattaqun is actually a derivative of Taqwa. And Taqwa comes from where? Wiqaya. Right? What is Wiqaya? It means to have immunity, to refrain and restrain yourself from something, to prevent something from yourself. We always hear this verse, Tattaqoon. Yes, Alhamdulillah, it's we will become Muttaqeen and it's because of Taqwa. Alhamdulillah. How many Ramadans have gone past? The months of Ramadan have gone past and yes, we know the aim is Taqwa. Brilliant. So what? Do we understand what Taqwa actually means? So that we may be able to achieve the aim for this month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us? You see, if I fast for any other reason other than what Allah has made the aim of this month, have I achieved what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set this month for? I haven't. If the hadith and the raya is something else that I have made for myself, then I haven't benefited from this month. I've made it something myself and therefore I will not get the benefits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for me in this month. And when we hear the word taqwa, what do we really translate it into our minds? Fear. Fear God, fear hell. That's what we translate it to, right? But please tell me, dear brothers and sisters, is Allah something to fear? The best example I can give you with regards to what truly taqwa is in essence to, and maybe you're here to hear the fara'il of Imam al-Hasan. Maybe you're here to hear how great Imam, I'm sure you know more than me about the life of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. The aim today is not just fara'il of Imam al-Hasan, no. If we truly believe he is also the Imam of Muttaqeen, then we also need to understand about him what it is that the aim is that he wants us also to follow in his footsteps. Our parents, do we fear them? I hope nobody says yes. <laughs> we respect them, we love them. Why? Because we also know that our life comes because of them. What do we fear? Their disappointment. Right? We don't fear our parents. We love them. I ask each and every one of you. If you had a million things that you have done wrong throughout your whole life and you at the end of it go to your parents and you ask them sincerely, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. How many of you think would of your parents would, would you think would forgive you? Inshallah, all of them, right? Because you know that they have the mercy within themselves towards you. Now, I ask you one simple question: Is Allah greater or our parents? So, if we have truly the belief that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is truly greater, and He is the manifestation, the love that our parents give to us is just a speck of the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself. So the point, my dear brothers and sisters, is this. Allah is not somebody or not an entity to fear. Because we do not want our Lord to be upset with us. We want his rada. We want him to be satisfied and pleased with us. Based on that is what I'm talking about. So taqwa really, in essence, is God consciousness. What does that mean? It means this, that simply you are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. In other words, you know how many times the word taqwa is used either as a noun or a verb in the Holy Quran? 251 times. So it's not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it once or twice. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating the word taqwa 251 times in the Quran, surely it, we should take our time to understand what it is. And if he is saying that the aim of this month is that we become of the muttaqeen and that we acquire this, surely we should understand what this truly is. 
So like I said, taqwa basically refers to something that we are trying to restrain from ourselves. What are we trying to restrain? I want to share a small story with you. Again, with regards to this month. Amir al-Mu'mineen, in this month, please recite salawat. In this month, at the beginning of this month, there's a conversation. And the conversation is this. This is the best of all months. The two greatest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are having a conversation with regards to this month. So just get this into your mind. Amir al-Mu'mineen is the questioner. And the Holy Prophet is the one who is answering the question. The best of creation with the second best of creation ask each other. One is asking the other. Amir al-Mu'mineen says to the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best deed in this month? So we have the very best of month. We have the very best of creation asking what is the very best deed in this month? The Holy Prophet replies to abstain from sin. To remove yourself from doing any single sin is the greatest deed in this month. That, my dear brothers and sisters, is God consciousness. Taqwa is an actual essence, keeping from yourselves, removing from yourselves, or stopping yourself from doing any type of sin. In this month, whether you do anything good or not, that's secondary. The aim this, of this month is that you do not do anything wrong. Now, brothers and sisters, even at the very youngest of our brothers and sisters can appreciate this point. Look how easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month. He's not saying to you, do X, Y, and Z, or Z here, right? I'll try to remember that. He's saying to you, you don't have to do hasanat. No. This month is just stop from doing any sin. How much more easier can our Lord make it for us? If we want to be Ahl taqwa do you know what it takes to get to heaven? That big picture that we have in our mind. It's not really the biggest picture. The biggest picture should be the Rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a side reward. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. To get to heaven, do you think that we need to do hasanat? Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He states that to gain entry into heaven, the only thing that you need to do is not to do a single sin. That's it. If you can't do goodness, no problem. But don't do anything wrong. That's the aim of this month. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. But we forget that. You see, we think that this month is about Salah and Song. Yeah? We think that this month is about Quran and Qiyam. But it's not. The real aim of this month is to look at yourself and first and foremost even the smallest sins. You know, we talk about riba. Yeah. I just said this. I'm just saying this. We make a million and one excuses. But it's not true. Min al-kabair. It's from the greater sins. 
Imam Jafar al-Sadiq also says السلام, that that person has his fast intact up until the point he backbites. We may think, okay, fine, fasting, I'm not drinking, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm doing my namaz on time, salah is in order, sayam is there. No. As soon as I backbite, finish. So this month, if you haven't, if you've achieved the aim of this month, it is simply that. Stopping ourselves from sinning. Inshallah, if God gives us life, we will think about doing hasanat afterwards. But that's the biggest thing. And the reason is this. Even scientists have proved now, if you do something for 20, between 22 and 28 days, repeatedly, it will become your habit. If we stop ourselves actively, that I won't say anything wrong, I won't swear. This brother of mine, I won't make fun of him, even if it's in jest. He's okay, it's, you know, we're just having a joke. Have you asked him how he feels when you laugh at him? You haven't. We do a lot of, a lot of things in, you know, in joke and jest. But have you asked that person, this name, this nickname that I have for him, does he like it? So we pass through these things very simply because we believe that deen is in ibadat. But the deen is not in ibadat. It's in mu'amalat. Our interaction with one another. That's where the real religion lies. We may worship. That's wajib from Allah. That's between baini wa baini Allah. But that's something that I should do even without any understanding of religion. But the mu'amalat between ourselves, between husband and wife, between brothers, between father and children, between children and their father, another, that's the real essence of what this religion and this month is about. Please recite one salam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to understand truly the aim and the ambitions. I know that I'm probably not going to come back here again. This was the first majalis and I just wanted to give you the lub al lub, the core of what it is that this month is about. You see, we may do everything else, but if we don't understand the real hadaf and the real core of what we are doing, it's pointless. Abstinence from sin, as again the Aimma have said, refraining from sin is greater in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than doing a good deed. Ya Allah. If I stop myself from sinning, that makes me greater in the eyes of Allah than trying to do good deeds. Understand the value of trying to stop sinning. And only you know what the sins are. You know yourselves. Check. It's been, we're already halfway through. How much have I changed? Just one thing. How many of the sins that I was doing before Ramadan am I still doing now? And if you're still doing them with your eyes and your ears and your tongue and your hands, understand that up until now, nothing. The true aim of this month hasn't been achieved. Inshallah, we have another half left. If it hasn't happened yet, start from today. I'm saying this to myself before I'm saying this to any one of you. I'm talking to myself before I'm talking to any one of you. I pray for you and I want you to pray for me. Ya Allah, please allow us, please raise your hand, dear brothers and sisters, to make us amongst those who truly understand the aim and the ghaya and the hadaf of this month. And what is it? Nothing else than abstaining from sin. Ya Allah, please allow us to abstain from sin. Oh Allah. Allah, make us from the muttaqi, make us from those who are truly God conscious. Oh Allah whose day we are here to celebrate. 
please allow us to follow in the footsteps of Imam al-Hasan alayhi yeah. salam. By the right and the station that he has with you, Ya Allah, forgive us our sins that we've committed. Yeah. Oh Allah, because of the right of this infallible, this muttaqi, this Imam al-Muttaqi, please Ya Allah, allow those who are ill, who have illnesses, who have family, who are unwell, please allow them to be cured and healed. Yeah. Ya, Allah. ya Allah, if we have anybody here who has legitimate, legitimate hajats, needs and wants, Ya Allah, by the haqq Imam al Hassan, allow these hajats to be fulfilled. Yeah. Ya Allah, we ask you and plead with you, if we have family members who are no longer with us, dear friends who are no longer amongst us because they're deceased, Ya Allah, by the haqq of Muhammad wa Muhammad, allow them to have the mercy in Barzakh. Yeah. Yeah. And a high station in the hereafter. Yeah. And our final supplication is that Ya Allah allow us to be worthy of being joined with Imam al Hujjah yeah. al Sharif in this world and inshallah in the hereafter. Yeah. Yeah.